I am not surprised at all, ladies and gentlemen. There is nothing about any of this. This so-called investigation and the Trump colluding with Russia. I'm not surprised there's a secret society within the establishment that was designed to get rid of Trump, to deny Trump the election. We were never supposed to know any of this because Hillary was going to win. And if Hillary Clinton had won, we wouldn't know one aspect of this. We wouldn't know any of this. Hillary Clinton losing through the biggest wrench in these people's plans, and they had the fear. They were aware she could lose. But now we've got a secret society, DOJ, FBI, intelligence community, some of it directly in touch with the Obama White House, no doubt in my mind, missing texts that are not really missing. They are somewhere, just like Hillary's 30,000 emails are somewhere. They're backed up on servers. They're backed up on devices. They are somewhere. The FBI claims they don't have them, but they are somewhere, just like Hillary's missing 30,000 emails are somewhere. The mystery of the missing text messages between Struck Stroke and the paramour Lisa Page continues to widen and deepen at the same time. It's all too pat. It's too easily understandable. This is as easily to understand as the House bank scandal was back in 1988 and 89. An FBI agent even texted about deleting the texts, warning everybody, you know what? We might want to get rid of these. Greetings, folks. Rush Limbaugh here, 800-282-2882, if you want to be on the program. I had a suggestion. Uh, Allie on our staff, not my cat, but Allie on our staff, suggested, you know, it might be fun one day. I'm not going to do it today, but I'm thinking about it. It might be fun one day to take calls from, from people uh, 30 and under, you know, millennials. The problem with that is, is that anybody can call and claim they're under 30. So we would have to be really discriminatory and aware of voices you know it's 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 not it's not fair to start judging people by their voices their gender their sexual orientation their their anything their race i mean even though you can do it you make a mistake in doing it. you're not supposed to do it but we would have to we'd have to raise our vigilance if we're going to do that profiling yeah it's exactly right we would have to profile I mean, if we're going to have calls from 30, maybe even 28, I don't know, and under, then the whole thing's blown if a bunch of 80-year-olds start calling or 75-year-olds and start trying to pass themselves off as young whippersnappers. Anyway, the FBI agent texting about deleting texts. These people had a secret society. They call it that, but it was a group of people that was hell-bent on denying Donald Trump the presidency. And I just to put it on the record here again for the I don't know how many umpteenth time, I don't have any doubt in my mind that that phony dossier was used to secure a FISA warrant. I have, look, in fact, let me say it exactly as it is. I have no doubt that they perpetrated a fraud on a judge at the FISA court. I mean, that's really what it is. If they use the dossier to get a FISA warrant to spy on Trump, that means they lied to a judge. Unless the judge was in on it. And when you're talking about the establishment, I mean, who the heck knows? The FISA court is super secret anyway. But regardless, it's a giant stink bomb. It is dirty as it can be. Trump is tweeting on it. And the more we learn about this, the more easily understandable it is and the more easily believable it is. Okay, a brief timeout. Got to take it. We'll come back and um, I'll see if any calls look interesting. <clears throat> and then we'll, I want to knock this Apple stuff out of the way. And then we move on to the secret society and the latest on the immigration deal. If there is any more good climate change stuff is just delicious. You can't, I cannot wait to get to that. And of course, the secret society, the FBI, the DOJ, the Obama administration attempting to sabotage Trump. This is getting juicy. I'm t 
none of this was ever to have been known. It was never to have seen the light of day, and it is. And it was not supposed to. And I think Hillary losing the election opens up the prospect of some of these people going to jail over what they did if there is a legitimate investigation into it. That is another big if as well, because the establishment still holds sway over a lot of these investigatory agencies and agents. So sit tight. Be right back. Meanwhile, what's really happening is the wheels are coming off the deep state's efforts to deny Trump the presidency, and once he won the presidency, to get him kicked out and removed. Now we've got stories of the missing texts between Peter Struck Stroke and his paramour, Lisa Page, and House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy, South Carolina, raised concerns that the two FBI agents mentioned a secret society shortly after Trump won the presidency. The day after the election, there's a text exchange between these two FBI agents, Struck Stroke and Page, a supposed to be fact-centric FBI agent saying, perhaps this is the first meeting of the secret society. So I'm going to want to know what secret society they're talking about because you're supposed to be investigating objectively the person who just won the Electoral College. Trump resistance with secret society. These people probably gave themselves that name. I, I, I can see. I really can. I can see where these two struck stroke. In the first place, you got hormones raging because they're having an affair. And he's probably trying to impress her like nothing. He's married. She's, I don't know if she's married or not, but he's just full-fledged, headlong into this affair. And she's probably got her own interest in it as well. But it sounds like Struck Stroke was the guy. You know, in a relationship, there's always somebody who loves somebody more than the other. Would you agree with that? Can I say that without getting beat up by people? I can't. Okay, then forget it. I didn't say that. This guy, and I think they probably, their, their, their connections and their contacts as FBI agents, I think they probably really went to their head. They thought they were really doing something important and cool, but they knew it's on the edge of legality, probably not legal. But they felt protected. They knew that uh, the Obama DOJ was behind them. They knew Obama was behind them. Comey, everybody in the deep state knew that they were uh, probably on the edge here, but all aligned. And I'm sure it got very heady. This is a very august group, very small group of people, very important project getting rid of Trump, defending the Washington establishment. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if these people got totally lost and caught up in how important they were and how cool they were and how exciting what they were doing was and how important it was. And it was clear from the texts of theirs that we've seen that they knew that they were on the edge and that they had to keep this under wraps and they had to keep it secret. So they probably named themselves the secret society. And who knows, folks, I, I, I wouldn't, doubt that if this whole group decided to name themselves that. I think we're dealing with a degree, a level of arrogance and superiority. I'm talking about psychological superiority. We are better than everybody else. We're the defenders. We're the protectors. And you combine that with their opinion of Trump, which is nothing more than he's human debris. This guy is sewer level scum. And you couple that with with the fact that he's won, he's an outsider, he's outsmarted them, and now the lid's blowing. Now we know that Hillary hired the people that wrote the fake Trump dossier. And now we're getting closer and closer to confirming that Obama and the DOJ lied to a FISA judge to get a warrant to surveil. So they're panicking. And that's why a bunch of texts 
from the five-month period of real activity on this are now missing. But my friends, they aren't missing. The FBI claims they can't find them, that there's a glitch and something's happened, but they are somewhere. They are on the original device. I've, I've read that the FBI was using Samsung 5, Samsung Galaxy 5s. Is that right? Well, those are old devices. Those are very, very old devices. But we're talking about the FBI here. There are servers. There are backups. There is redundancy. We're being told this stuff's gone just like Lois Lerner's stuff just miraculously disappeared. Just like Hillary's 30,000 emails just disappeared. They didn't. They're somewhere. Somebody can get them. Somebody has them. They're like you. If, if, if you use iDrive here, if, if you pick up on the idea of backing up your phones and your computer to iDrive. Okay, so you may have a glitch on your phone or your computer and you lose, but they're there. They're on that server. They're on the iDrive server. And they may be elsewhere. So Struck Stroke and Page, their two devices are being used and their computers. Whatever server side backups are happening, whatever the FBI's, these text messages are somewhere. And somebody could find them if they wanted to. Now, let's go to the audio sound bites. Let's listen. This is uh, first off last night on Fox News, Representative John Ratcliffe, a Texas Republican, along with uh, Trey Gowdy, talking about this secret society at the FBI. And what this is interesting because they have learned that these two people are talking about an investigation. And, and Obama was briefed on an investigation, but they don't know which investigation, Trump or Clinton. Let's get started. We learned today about information that in the immediate aftermath of his election that there may have been a secret society of folks within the Department of Justice and the FBI to include Page and Strzok that would be working against him. We learned today about this is above and beyond what is in the four page memo about the FISA warrant. This is additional. We learned today about information in the immediate aftermath of Trump's election. There may have been a secret society of people, DOJ, FBI, including Strzok, Stroke, and Page, meaning others, that would be working against Trump. Here's Trey Gowdy weighing in. What on Johnny and I saw today was a text about not keeping text. We saw more manifest bias against President Trump all the way through the election into the transition. And I saw an interesting text that Director Comey was going to update the President of the United States about an investigation. I don't know if it was a Hillary Clinton investigation, because remember that had been reopened in the fall of 2016, or whether it was the Trump investigation. I just find it interesting that the head of the FBI was going to update the President of the United States, who at that point would have been President Obama. So that means Obama's in the loop. The secret society, struck, stroke, whatever they're doing, Comey knows. He's FBI director, struck, stroke, or FBI, and she's a lawyer, he's an agent. And there are other people involved here. They've got this secret society going, and the text they saw referred to an investigation that Director Comey was going to update Obama on. But they don't know which, because he's right. Hillary was being invented. They reopened this like a weekend before the election, the email server thing, which Hillary never forgot. Or the Trump dossier investigation. Let's go to June 8th, 2017. If these texts are accurate, it may not look good for Jim Comey. On June 8th of 2017, Comey testified before Senate Intelligence Committee hearing on Russian interference in the presidential election. And during the Q&A, Mark Warner, Democrat Virginia, said, In all your experience, Director Comey, President Trump was the only president you felt like in every meeting you needed to document because at some point, using your words, he might put out a non-truthful representation of the meeting. As FBI director, I interacted with President Obama and I spoke only twice in three years and didn't document it. OK, so this is hang on now. June 8th, 2017. As FBI director, I interacted with Obama. I spoke only twice in three years. I didn't document it. 
It's unstated because I didn't think Obama needed to be documented. He's the impeccable example of integrity, honesty, and this, which is a crock. But here's the next bite. June 8th. Question. This is from Senator Martin Heinrich, Democrat, New Mexico. Prior to January 27th of this year, meaning 2017, have you ever had a one-on-one -on -one meeting or a private dinner with a president of the United States? No. I met dinner, no. I had two one-on-ones with President Obama that I laid out in my testimony, once to talk about law enforcement issues, law enforcement and race, which was an important topic throughout for me and for the president, and then once very briefly for him to say goodbye. Okay, so he tells Mark Warner that as FBI director, he interacted with Obama, spoke only twice in three years, didn't document it. And then he tells Martin Heinrich, Democrat in New Mexico, uh, no. I mean, dinner? No. I had two one-on-ones with Obama that I laid out in my testimony. Once talk about law enforcement issues, law enforcement and race, which was uh, blah, blah, blah. This was all about the fact that Comey had to document everything he heard Trump say, because Trump's such a liar. Now, if these texts are accurate... The texts say that Comey was updating Obama on an investigation. They don't know which. And these are texts that Trey Gowdy and Ratcliffe read. And the texts detailed Comey updating Obama on an investigation. Comey, under oath, doesn't say a word here about updating Obama on anything. All he did was talk about law enforcement issues and race. So people are thinking Comey may have not have been forthcoming under oath while testifying before the committees. Based on what we've learned with the text saying he was actively updating Obama on an investigation. Now, the odds are he's updating Obama on the Trump investigation because the only thing about the Hillary investigation is how to cover it up and make it amount to nothing. There wouldn't really be any need for an update of that. We'll be back here in a minute. And with talent on loan from God. It's Rush Limbaugh and the most listened to radio talk show in America. Happily back for yet another exciting excursion into broadcast excellence Coming to you from the fortified EIB Southern Command in an unmarked bunker on a popular thoroughfare. 800-282-2882 if you want to be on the program, the email address. Lrushbo at eibnet.us. In jaw-dropping text, Peter Struck Stroke expressed concern about joining the Mueller team. My friends, look, if it looks like a witch hunt, and it sounds like a witch hunt, and it reads like a witch hunt, then it is a witch hunt. And I stopped to think, the Republicans wasted most of the first year of the Trump presidency because they thought that the media narrative on Trump-Putin collision was true. Or they thought it was close enough that they couldn't take any chances about going all in with Trump in case it turned out to be true and he was eventually to be impeached. They believed it. Look, they're creatures of the swamp themselves. And there was so much of it. And remember, Washington is Washington. And if the deep state, if the intelligence agencies are saying this over and over and over and over and over again. If they're flooding the zone, if every newspaper, if every cable network is reporting these leaks, you can almost see how they would have no choice but them to believe it. And so they kept their distance from Trump. And that whole year, you know, we're, we're, we're talking here, we're each saying to ourselves, if they would just get on board for three months, if they just get on board the Trump agenda, there'd be no stopping them. And we thought they weren't getting on board because they didn't like Trump or because they resented Trump, one of those things. It wasn't that. It was they fell for the narrative. 
enough of them thought there might be something to it that they couldn't risk not buying into it. Speaking of the intelligence agencies, I'm sure some of you have already thought of this, but it, it just hit me a few days ago. For some reason, I was thinking about the war in Iraq. You remember what the intelligence agencies were telling us in the war in Iraq? You remember what they were telling us? There was detail. There were photos. There was conclusive evidence that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. And it wasn't just U.S. intel. It was MI5, MI6. It was intelligence agencies all over the world. It, George W. Bush kept quoting them. George W. Bush kept citing them. George W. Bush sent Colin Powell to the U.N., with the so-called evidence. And Colin Powell had to present it to the Security Council. There were photos and all of these bits of proof that Saddam had weapons of mass destruction. Colin Powell now says that's the most embarrassing period in his life because it turns out none of it was true. And remember the immediate aftermath, everybody, wow, man, how could they have gotten it so wrong? Man, it's a, and, and the story we got was, that Saddam himself was to blame because he was leading everybody on. He wanted the world to think that he was the biggest Arab in the Middle East. He was the giant that was going to slay the United States. So he furthered the belief. He helped it along. Sorry, that doesn't wash with me. Okay, so the guy says he's got him. That's your basis for believing it? What if? Just what if? Remember, they all thought Gore had won that election until the Supreme Court came along and stole it for Bush. This is what they thought. The Democrat Party is the Washington establishment, and the Washington establishment believes that Gore won the presidency, and that the Florida recount aftermath was bogus and rigged, that James Baker did a better job than the Democrat people did in finding votes, the hanging chads. What if... The intel on the war in Iraq was another disinformation campaign to damage another Republican president. And boy, did that work. Ever since there were no weapons. Look at what we did. We, 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 we spent, Bush spent two and a half years traveling the country, building support for the war in Iraq. We had the massive opening day of shock and awe. And we had the pictures of Saddam's statue coming down, Saddam uh, eventually being captured, hiding out in a hole in the ground somewhere. But there were no weapons of mass destruction. After that, no, yes, there were, Russ, there were. They're, they've been moved to Syria. We have pictures of the trucks. They got them out of there. They got them out. We know we had them. Well, we know he used nerve gas on the Kurds at one time, which is, which is weapons of mass destruction. But just what if? The quote-unquote intelligence community misrepresented on purpose the degree to which Hussein had WMDs. Because I'll tell you, it was a very, very embarrassing moment for the Bush administration. I mean, two years of ontological certitude. This guy posed a bigger threat than al-Qaeda. This guy, they even showed us photos where Al-Qaeda may have trained outside Baghdad. Now, we know the Republicans are not the favored party in Washington amongst swamp dwellers. Even though many of the CIA apparatus were, of course, aligned with Bush. But I was just thinking about this the other day. And that, that was a, a glaring example where... If it was legitimate, look how wrong they were. I mean, they couldn't have been more wrong, and it was not just one intelligence agency. It was the entire intel community in this country and in the U.K. and all of our allies. There was supposedly unanimous agreement on Saddam having weapons of mass destruction. Now, what if? 
this is hindsight, which is always 2020. What if, based on what we know now, we know how the deep state has been trying to undermine Donald Trump from the days he was a candidate to during his transition to even its ongoing now as president? We're learning of Struck Stroke and the FBI and the Hillary opposition research dossier that ends up becoming fodder for a warrant at the FISA court to spy on Trump. So we know the deep state can mobilize if they want to, and they can create false narratives that everybody in the media believes. They even had the Republican Party for a year believing that Trump had conspired with Russia, maybe, to steal the election. What if Saddam weapons of mass destruction was also a false narrative designed to... What it did, did it ultimately embarrass Bush? Did it weaken the U.S. military? Did it, whatever it did, I mean, it opened the doors for the Democrats to literally destroy his presidency in the second term, which is what they did. They launched every salvo they had. They did everything they could to get John Kerry elected in 2004. As the Democrat nominee. So I just I just wonder. And then I remember Chuck U. Schumer telling Donald Trump after he had criticized the intelligence community one day. Chuck U. said, you better be careful because those guys can make your life hell, Mr. President. So I don't know. I it's it's all deep state. It's it's all stuff happening way beyond wherever our eyes can see and our ears can hear. PMSNBC is reporting that the um, is the New York Times says that Comey shared memos about Trump's meeting, I'm getting this word by word as it's hunt and pecked on the New York Times, Comey shared memos about Trump's meeting with the special counsel team. I don't know what that is. I don't know. This is what's dangerous to get headlines off TV. So anyway, we'll we'll track that down and get to it in um, in due course. I just this this whole. Deep state intelligence community, all of these errors, that weapons of mass destruction, that was just huge. And Bush bought it. Totally trust. Well, we all did. Mind boggling. Now this, what we're what we're learning about Struck Stroke and Comey and the there's no question here that there was a mighty collusion effort between the Democrats, the Hillary campaign, the FBI, the Department of Justice, that's the Obama administration, to spy on the Trump campaign and then the Trump transition team. And slowly but surely, we're getting to the bottom of it. Despite a whole lot of efforts to cover it up. Okay, here's what MSNBC reported, that Mueller interviewed Comey. And that Comey gave Mueller his memos on meetings with Trump. You know, Comey said he had to keep meetings because Trump lies. He didn't have to record what Obama said because Obama, the impeccable example of honesty and integrity, and all that rot. But with Trump, what a lying sack of you-know-what. So anyway, the New York Times says that Comey gave Mueller his memos on his meetings with Trump. And and the, the, the jaw dropping nature of the text from struck stroke i was i was remiss here in not finishing closing the loop on this here's what struck stroke wrote to his paramour lisa page you and i both know the odds are nothing if i thought it was likely i'd be there no question i hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern that there's no big there there what this means Struck Stroke was writing to Page about his lack of desire to be on the Mueller team because he didn't think there was any collusion. That's why Trey Gowdy 
is describing this as jaw-dropping. This is Ratcliffe because he's writing to Lisa Page. You and I both know the odds are nothing. If I thought it was likely, I'd be there, no question, meaning on the investigative team. I hesitate. He eventually did join it, obviously. He said, I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern there's no big there there, meaning Jimmy collusion. But that didn't stop them from trying to create the illusion that there was, and they spent over a year doing so. But that's why the struck stroke text is considered jaw-dropping, not because of its audacity, but because he's talking to somebody close. He doesn't think anybody's ever going to see it. Hey, we all know there's nothing there.